All right, we are going to look at DSpace as an alternative repository. Uh, in the previous videos, we looked at Drupal, but let's give this one a spin. Um, I'm already logged in, so please make sure that you navigate to the same space. And I'm already logged in as the demo administrator. You can see the details there on the screen. Um, keep in mind that DSpace has a particular way of organizing their data. So first of all, they like to have communities. Within the communities, they have collections and they can have multiple collections. And then within a collection, there can be multiple items. And an item can be actually be made up of numerous files. So keep that structure in mind because we are going to recreate, well, we're going to create that structure for our open textbook. Our community is going to be called the Open Maths Textbook, for example. Um, and to create the community, therefore, we need to look on the right hand panels in the right hand panels and look for the context and create community. The new screen says edit metadata for a new top level community. So here I can put in the open mathematics textbook as my community. Uh, and then you can see I can now fill in some more data. I can put in a short description. So we can just call it uh, maths. Uh, I can write a little introductory text here. Uh, if I want, I can put in some copyright text here and uh, even a little bit of news as well. It's also possible to put in a logo, uh, which we can do. But once that's ready, then to create the community, you simply click create. I'm back on the home page and now I want to find my new community. Uh, I'm scrolling down and as you can see in this demo version, lots of people are having a go. Uh, ours was called Open Mathematics Textbook. There it is. And uh, now we can click to go into our community. What we see is there's not much there at the moment. Um, this uh, community is a shell and now we need to load in some some substance so we're going to um, again look on the right hand uh, within the right hand panels to look for the context again and you can see now we have some more options however the one that we are particularly concerned with now is create a collection so we'll select create a collection and a page very similar to the one we've just used appears but now these as you now realize are the subsections um, within the community. So I'm going to call this first one uh, computation. You saw the one collection created and uh, the idea is that you repeat this process as many times as you need. On the example on the screen you can see that within this community now the OER mathematics textbook community there are actually three collections. Uh, computation, number theory, consumer arithmetic. And we can see that there's even been one item already loaded in. So let's load in some more items. So in this case, uh, I'm going to want to load an item into the consumer arithmetic uh, collection. And um, you can see that I've already put the logo in. And if we look carefully, you can see that it says there is a hyperlink that says submit a new item to this collection. The first step to providing metadata for the item uh, is to describe it. And on this first screen, you'll see that it asks some pretty straightforward questions. Who are the author or authors? Um, what is the title? When was it published? Who was the publisher? And um, are there any ISIN numbers for it? What is it? Is it an article, a book or a chapter? And what language is it in? Click Next once this information has been filled in. There's also a screen about access. Um, is there an embargo on this particular resource? Uh, is it meant to be kept private until a certain date? Uh, and it's in this screen that you will identify uh, that period of embargo. The upload screen is, of course, critical. 
there's a little space where you can browse and then upload electronic files. Useful for an open textbook, it is possible to provide each of the files in the item with a CC license or a Creative Commons license. Um, not a lot of options in the default setup of DSpace, as you can see there. Um, it just offers a blanket Creative Commons descriptor, uh, but you can also identify a public domain or that there is no Creative Commons license. You might have noticed that when we were tagging the metadata to the resource, there was no discussion about curriculum. Uh, and this is a critical issue for our open textbook. So uh, we would have to do that ourselves. It's obviously not out of the box uh, in terms of the default settings. Uh, you'll need to scroll down to you see registries and then there's a um, section called metadata. Uh, click inside there and then you can start constructing the curriculum um, metadata that you'll need to tag resources for an open textbook.